Yes, guys, turn to problem number 21. Major Limited has a subsidiary X Limited holding 76% of the latest paid up share capital. The balance shares in X Limited are held by a foreign collaboration company and a memorandum of understanding has been entered into with the foreign company providing for the following. The shares held by the foreign company will be sold to Major Limited and the price per share will be calculated by capitalizing the yield at 15%. Yield for this purpose would mean 40% of average pre-tax profits of the last 3 years that is 15 lakhs, 20 lakhs and 32.5 lakhs. The actual cost of the shares to the foreign company was 1,20,000 and the profit that would accrue to them would be taxable at an average rate of 30%. Tax will be deducted from the proceeds and major limited will pay directly to the government out of the net consideration. 50% will be remitted to the foreign company immediately and the balance will be transferred to unsecured loan repayable after one year. Major Limited decided to absorb X Limited simultaneously and it decided to write down the fixed assets of X Limited by 5%. The balance sheet figures included a sum of 75,000 due by X Limited to Major Limited that is intercompany owings to be adjusted from both current assets as well as debtors. Sorry, debtors as well as creditors. The entire arrangement was approved by the concern for being given effect from 1-4-2011. The summarized balance sheet on 31st March 2011 immediately before the implementation of the scheme is as under. So check there, Major Limited already holds investments in X Limited purchased at a cost of in the book value 3,70,000 on the asset side. You are required to show the balance sheet of Major Limited as it would appear after the arrangements are put together put through on 1st April 2011 so let's start guys we need to first calculate the PC only for 24% 76% is already held purchase consideration Read. A memorandum of understanding has been entered into with the foreign company providing the following. The shares issued by the foreign company will be sorry, held by the foreign company will be sold to major limited. Price per share will be calculated by capitalizing the yield at 15%. Yield for this purpose would mean 40% of average pre-tax profits for the last 3 years which were 15 lakhs, 20 lakhs and 32.5 lakhs. First start with average pre-tax profits. Balance sheet is given in rupees. So write everything in rupees only. Don't write those lakhs and all. Guys, the year is not given exactly. So we can't take weighted average. Take simple average. Fifteen lakhs plus twenty lakhs plus thirty two point five lakhs divided by three. This is twenty two lakh fifty thousand. Yield for this purpose is forty percent of pre tax profits. Forty percent of pre tax profits is nine lakhs. Divided by number of shares. One second. We got yield. We have to capitalize the yield first. Capitalized yield. At the rate of 15% if I capitalize the yield. Then this will be 60 lakhs I guess. 9 lakhs divided by 15%. Then what is this PC to foreign company? How many shares he holds? 60 lakhs into 76% is held by major limited. Only balance 24% is held by them. 24% into 6, 14 lakh 40,000.
that is a PC to foreign company that is only for 24 percent how is it discharging this read point number B actual cost to the share cost of the shares of the foreign company is 1 lakh 20 thousand only so cost of shares to foreign company One lakh twenty thousand that will give me my taxable profits thirteen lakhs twenty thousand. What is the tax on this? Tax should be paid at the rate of thirty percent. 3,96,000. What is he saying? The average cost is 1,20,000. The profits that would accrue to them would be taxable at an average rate of 30%. And the tax payable will be deducted from the proceeds. What is the proceeds? 14,40. Balance the remaining ta the tax on this is 3,96. Major limited will directly pay to the government out of the net consideration 50% is remitted to the foreign company and the balance will be secured loan repayable after one year. So first get the balance. Balance consideration payable. What was the total consideration payable? 14,40,000. What was the tax on this? 3,96,000. Guys, normal mistake what we do is we deduct it from 13,20,000. 13,20,000 is not consideration. It is taxable profits. So we have to deduct from 14,40,000 minus 3,96,000. This will leave us with an answer of 10,44,000. That is your net consideration. Out of this net consideration, 50% is paid immediately. Balance 50% is transferring to unsecured loan. Net consideration settled in cash. Half of this 5,22,000. And consideration transferred to unsecured loan. File at 22,000 again. So this is how we drafted. Now, how much is PC paid in cash? This amount of tax has to be paid to government. This is also tax paid. This amount of 522,000, 50% of the net consideration is directly paid in cash. This is also cash paid. The total cash paid, what we get is 9,18,000. The balance 522,000 will be transferred to unsecured loan. On a combined basis, we get the total PC as 14,40,000. Write the discharge. Discharge of PC. PC in cash. What I paid to the government and other one paid to foreign company. I paid to government only the tax of 3,96,000. To the foreign company, 50% of net proceeds, 5,22,000. My PC in cash is 9,18,000. PC in the form of unsecured loan, 5,22,000.
This total is 14 lakh 40. That's it. We have come to the end of the first working note. Nature of amalgamation, PC is paid in cash. That itself will make it as purchase. One more thing he has said. Major Limited decided to absorb X Limited simultaneously and it has decided to write down the fixed rate sets of X Limited by 5%. Again, a revaluation also existing there. It will make it amalgamation by nature of purchase. Nature of amalgamation purchase method of accounting purchase method. Once we find a purchase method, we have to go for computation of goodwill or capital reserve. To get goodwill or capital reserve, we have to compare PC with the net assets taken over. Start with net assets taken over. Start with your assets. Assets, fixed assets should be written down by 5%. So check your asset side of X limited. Fixed assets written down by 5%, 17,50,000 divided by, sorry, minus 5%. Yep, 16,62,500. Debtors, take it at full value. There's no adjustment given there. Intercompany owings will be adjusted after I take over, not now. Inventories is 25 lakhs. Cash and bank balance is 2 lakh 50. The sum total 49 lakhs 12,500. Deduct outside liabilities. Less outside liabilities. Current assets is 10 lakhs. Sorry, current liabilities is 10 lakhs. Net assets taken over thirty nine lakhs twelve thousand five hundred. Compare this with PC. I have two PCs. One part of PC is for the seventy six percent, which is already held as investment. Cost of investment being three lakh seventy. One more PC is for the balance twenty four percent. That is your purchase consideration paid to foreign company fourteen lakh forty thousand. So get the PC. Purchase consideration first part is for the foreign company what I paid to foreign company is fourteen lakhs forty thousand investments in major limited, sorry, yeah, check investments in major limited balance sheet, 3,70,000. That is a total PC of 18,10,000.
39,12,500 taken over the PC of 18,10,000, I'll get a capital reserve. My resultant capital reserve is 21,2,500. My resultant capital reserve is 21,2,500. Once you have the figure of PC, start with your balance sheet. Don't forget to cancel your intercompany owings. Balance sheet of major limited. Equity and liabilities. Shareholder funds. Major limited share capital, 40 lakhs. Major limited reserves and surplus. Already existing reserve in the company is 80 lakhs. Plus I have a capital reserve now, 21 lakhs, 2,500. Non-current liabilities, secured loan, first one, 20 lakhs already existing in the balance sheet. Unsecured loan for the balance 50% of consideration to foreign company which will be settled after one year, 5,22,000. Come to your current liabilities, 30 lakhs plus 10 lakhs, 40 lakhs minus intercompany owings, intercompany owings is given to us as 75,000, 
So this is 39 lakhs 25,000. Well, give us the balance sheet total. Come to your assets. Non current assets. Tangible fixed assets. Fixed assets existing in major is 60 lakhs plus 16 lakh 62,500, 76 lakh 62,500. That's it, only one non current asset. There is no goodwill to be written also. The investments gets cancelled already. Current assets. Debtors. 35 lakhs plus 5 lakhs 40 minus 75,000 39 lakh 25,000 inventory is no change direct figure added 55 lakhs but there will be a change as far as cash and bank is concerned cash and bank 41 lakh 30,000 plus 2 lakh 50 that will give us 43 lakh 80,000 but out of 43 lakh 80,000 <coughs> He paid 9,18,000 in <coughs> cash. So, 33,62,000. 34,62. And this will come to the balance sheet total. 2 crore 5 lakh 49,500. Read the next one, 22. Given below is a summarized balance sheet of H Limited as on 31st March 2011. There is an equity share capital which is given all rupees in lakhs. Yes guys, there is a balance sheet given to you. And right below the balance sheet he says, M Limited, another existing company, holds 25% of the existing share capital of H Limited purchased at 10 rupees per share. It is agreed that M Limited will take over the entire undertaking of H Limited on 30th September 2011 
as on which date the position of the current assets except cash and bank balance and the creditors is as follows. Some stock and debtors is 4 lakhs and creditors is 2 lakhs. Profit earned for half year or 30th September by H Limited was 70,500 after charging a depreciation of 32,500 on block assets. H Limited declared a dividend of 10% for the year 2010-11 on 30th September 2011 and paid the same within a week. Now, till there is sufficient information for us to draft a balance sheet on 30th September, that is the date on which he is taking over. Now, what is the purpose of takeover check? Goodwill of H Limited will be valued at 80,000. Block assets are valued at 10% above the book value on 31st March 2011. And preference shareholders will be allotted 10% preference shares of 10 rupees each by M Limited. And the existing shareholders of H will, be, will receive requisite number of equity shares of 10 rupees each from M Limited valued at par 10 rupees per share. Calculate PC and explain how the goodwill or capital reserve will appear in the balance sheet of M Limited after absorption. So one working note you don't have to prepare is the balance sheet after absorption. So let's start. First prepare the balance sheet on the date of takeover 30th September. Balance sheet as on the date of takeover, 30th September 2011. Let's see how the balance sheet actually looks like. Equity share capital, no change. I'm writing it in full figures, 4 lakhs. Your wish, you can put it in lakhs as well. 10% preference share capital is 3 lakhs. General reserve unchanged, 1 lakh. P&L will obviously change with the amount of profits and dividend. We'll write it later on. And then I have a creditors. The creditor changed in value. And on 30th September, it was 2 lakhs. Value given below the balance sheet. Come to the block assets. Block assets reduced by the depreciation. Minus depreciation. Again, depreciation for 6 months is given to us as 32,500. So, this will be 567500 Stock and debtors. Below the balance sheet, value is given to you as 4 lakhs. Cash and bank will obviously change. This will become balancing figure. First fill up the P&L. P&L as on 30th September 2011. Start with P&L as on 31st March 2011. This is given to us on the balance sheet date as 1 lakh. Plus net profit for 6 months. 6 months net profit, he has got 70,500. However, he has paid dividends. Dividend paid at the rate of 10% on paid up share capital, 40,000. P&L is 1,30,500 as on 30th September. 1,30,500 on 30th September and arrive at the cash and bank balance as a balancing figure.
one lakh sixty three thousand. One lakh sixty three thousand. Read the last para to get the PC. Goodwill of H Limited is valued at eighty thousand and cross block is valued ten percent over their book value on thirty first March two thousand eleven for the purpose of takeover. And preference shareholders are allotted ten percent preference shares in ten of ten rupees each by M Limited. Equity shareholders will receive requisite number of equity shares of ten rupees each in M Limited, valued at ten rupees per share. So put on heading purchase consideration. PC to preference shareholders. Straightforward. They will get 10% preference shares in M Limited for the same value. That is three lakhs. PC to equity shareholders. Requisite number of shares. I don't know the number of shares. So follow net assets method. Start with assets. First one is block assets or fixed assets or block assets. Both are same. They are valued ten percent over their book value as on thirty first March two thousand eleven. Thirty first March two thousand eleven. It was six lakhs. So they are taking over at six lakh sixty. Then comes your stock and debtors. No change. Take it over at book value as on 30th September. 30th September book value is four lakhs. Similar way for cash and bank. We have got this answer as one lakh sixty-three thousand. In addition to this, is also getting good. Is also taking over goodwill, which is valued at eighty thousand. Is thirteen lakh three thousand. Only one outside liability. Creditors. Book value on thirtieth September is two lakhs. This will give me net assets. Eleven lakh three thousand. Net assets is eleven lakh three thousand. But I need net assets attributable to equity shareholders. So deduct PC to preference shareholders. Preference shareholders are being given a PC of three lakh. So my net assets attributable to equity shareholders eight lakh three thousand. Out of this, he says twenty five percent. Check first line after the balance sheet. M Limited holds twenty five percent of the equity share capital of H. Less percentage holding by M Limited, twenty five percent. Twenty five percent of this is two lakhs seven fifty, I guess. Yep, two lakh eight seventy five. One fourth of this, or twenty-five percent, or this is PC to outside shareholders.
PC to outside shareholders is 6 lakhs 2250. How is he settling the shares? Issue price is 10. So number of shares to be issued. By M. Is issuing at 10 rupees par only. 60,225 shares. There's a revaluation which happened, so it should be amalgamation by nature of purchase. Method of accounting is purchase method. We have to identify the figure of goodwill or capital reserve. We need to compare PC with net assets taken over. So let's see PC. My total PC, first part, PC to outside shareholders. Outside shareholders PC is six lakhs two thousand two fifty. Cost of investments. Read that sentence, first sentence. Oh, one second, guys. Six lakhs two thousand is only to outside, only to the equity shareholders. Preference shareholders is three lakhs. Nine lakh two thousand two fifty. Cost of investments. M Limited, another existing company, holds twenty five percent of the equity share capital of H. Purchased at par ten rupees per share. So 25% of 4 lakhs par values is 1 lakh. Total PC is 10 lakh 2,250. Compare this with net assets taken over. Never include goodwill. So excluding goodwill. What is the net asset? 13 lakh 3,000. What is the goodwill? 80,000. So this will give you 10 lakh 23,000. Exclude goodwill, no? 10 lakh 23,000. You should exclude goodwill from that. You get a capital reserve of 20,750. That's all he has. No balance sheet. What is the amount of goodwill or capital reserve? We got a capital reserve of 23rd, 
read question number 23. AB and MB decided to amalgamate to and from <coughs> to form a new company, <coughs> AM Limited. The following is a summarized balance sheet of 31st March 2012. So both the companies are amalgamating to form a new company. Check AB and MB have intercompany holdings. AB holds 1500 shares in MB and a and MB holds 4500 shares in AB. Calculate the amount of PC to be paid to AB and MB and draw the balance sheet of AM. Assuming that the amalgamation is by nature of purchase. It should be purchased because I can't take over investments. When I cannot take over investment compulsory it should be purchased. Fixed assets of AB are to be reduced by 50,000. That of MB are to be taken at 3 lakhs. 12% debentures of AB and MB are to be discharged by MB Limited, uh, AM Limited by issuing such number of 15% debentures so as to maintain the same amount of interest. Each share of AM are 100 rupees each. Show how the investment elements reserve will be treated in the financial statements assuming that the reserve should be maintained for 3 years. Guys, he did not give you any information on how to calculate the PC so we should go by net assets method. But before we go to the net assets method, because when we are taking net assets, I have to take liabilities at settlement value. Debentures is also a liability to be taken at settlement value. First identify the settlement value of those debentures. First identify the settlement value of debentures and then go for PC. Two companies AB and MB. Read that statement. 12% debentures of AB and MB are discharged by AM by issuing such number of 15% debentures so as to maintain the same amount of interest. First calculate debenture interest. In selling company. Divide it with the yield per debenture in AM Limited. Yield is 15% per debenture and we will arrive at discharge to debenture holders. Calculate guys, 12% debentures of 3 lakhs and 1 lakh. So that will give you 36,000 and... I'm sorry, 12%, yeah. 36,000 and 12,000. Divided by 15%, so this will be 2 lakh 40,000 and this will be 8 lakhs, sorry, 80,000. Divided by 50%, 15%, it is 2,40,000 and 80,000. This is your discharged debenture holders. Identify the PC. There is no particular method given. So we have to go for net assets method. However, going for net assets method is slightly tricky here because AB includes an investment in MB. MB includes an investment in AB. When we are trying to find out the net assets, even this should be included in the value of net assets. But at what value? These values which are given to me as 3,50,000 and 5 lakhs can't be taken as the values because they are only the book values. Assets should be taken at realizable values. So the fair value of fair estimate of the realizable value should be considered as intrinsic value here. That means we have to find out the value of investment with respect to the net assets valuation. So start purchase consideration 
by Nettesets method. Maintain two columns A, B, and B. Assets The first asset that I see is fixed assets. There is a change in the value of fixed assets. If you observe, fixed assets of AB should be reduced by 50,000. So this is 7 lakhs. And that of MB should be considered as 3 lakhs. Next is your investments. I leave a blank here. But here something should be like this. 1500 shares into a particular value and 4000 shares into a particular value. These are intrinsic values. We will fill up those figures later on. So we'll go for the current assets next. No change. 4 lakhs and 1 lakh. You can't total it, just leave it like that. Outside liabilities. We have two outside liabilities, creditors and debentures. Creditors are 60,000 and 20,000. Debentures are 3 lakhs and 1 lakh. I'm sorry, settlement values, right? 2 lakh 40 and 80,000. Liabilities total is 3 lakhs and 1 lakh. Pocket assigned. From here, we have to calculate what is the net assets. There is no preference shares. So, these are the net assets attributable to equity shareholders as well, I guess. Yeah, there is no preference shares at all. So, this is the net assets. Once I divide it with the number of equity shares, check what is the number of equity shares in each company. Each share is 100 rupees. So, in the first company, it should be 10,000. In the second company, it should be 6,000. 10,000 and 6,000. If I divide with this, we will get something called as intrinsic value per share. How will we get? First of all, without having these totals, I can't get what is the asset total. If I can't get the asset total, I can't fill up my net assets figure. If I can't fill up net assets figure, I can't even get your intrinsic value. Let's assume this is X and this is Y. Interdependency exists there. So let's take two variables there, X and Y. Fill up. Investments. 1500 shares in MB. MB's intrinsic value is Y, not X. So 1500 into Y. 1500 Y. 4000 into X. 4000 X. Now you can solve this. We can say that this is 11 lakhs plus 1500 Y. And this is 4 lakhs plus 4000 Y. Sorry, 4000 X. And my net assets can now be written as 8 lakhs plus 1500 Y. And this can be written as 3 lakhs plus 4000 X. How to form equations? Easy. Net assets divided by number of equity shares should be equal to intrinsic value. So, substitute. 
एट लैक्स प्लस फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड वाई डिवाइडेड बाई टेन थाउजेंड इज इक्वल टू इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यू एक्स एन एन इक्वेशन फ्रॉम दिस एट्टी प्लस जीरो पॉइंट वन वन फाइव वाई इज इक्वल टू एक्स सिमिलरली सॉल्व दिस टू सॉल्व दिस डिवाइडेड बाई सिक्स थाउजेंड सिक्स थाउजेंड फाइव फिफ्टी फोर डिवाइडेड बाई सिक्स टू बाई थ्री Now I get two equations. Solve for x and y. I'll substitute this x in this. Fifty plus two by three into eighty is one sixty by three x. Sorry, one sixty by three plus two by three into point one five zero point one y is equal to y. So this is point nine y is equal to three ten by three, or y is equal to three ten divided by two point seven. Identify the value of y. You get an approximate valuation. Take a closest figure, no problem. Once you get y, substitute the value in that equation, and you can find out x. Yes, guys. Do I have the value of y? Fourteen point. One one four point eight one. Substitute for the value of x. Ninety seven point. मजे कर ले कैसे मारना पड़ता ना उसमें से वापस दीज आर नॉट पीसीज गाइज दीज आर इंट्रेंसिक वैल्यूज कमन लेट्स फिल अप Purchase consideration. Eight 
ABMB. Get the figure of net assets. 8 lakhs plus 1500 Y. 1500 Y is 114.81. Substitute you will get net assets. Eight lakhs plus fifteen hundred into Y one one four point eight one. This one is three lakhs plus four thousand X. X is ninety seven point two two. We'll identify the values of both net assets. These are the value of net assets. This is not the PC guys. This is not the PC because there's intercompany holdings now. Now check for the intercompany holdings. Why should I even pay so much when there's an intercompany holding existing? So if I pay the PC to MB, to the shareholders of MB, share, uh, the shares of MB are held by AB Limited. A part of PC comes here. Again if you discharge AB, the PC to AB will be again held by MB. So again keep crossing here and there. So let's try to deduct the intercompany. Intercompany holdings. Come on. First case. In AB Limited, how many shares are held by MB? MB holds 1500 shares. So 50, sorry. In AB, MB holds 4000 shares. 4000 shares out of AB Limited's total shares of 10,000. That means 40% is held by MB. So deduct 40% of this, 9,72,215 into 40% is 82,215 held by MB. This is 6,88,880. Out of this, a portion is held by AB. How much shares are held by AB? AB holds 1,500 shares of MB. Total shares in MB are 6,000. So out of 1,500 as a share in 6,000 is 25%. 40% and PC to outside shareholders only to the outsiders it will be 5 lakhs Thirteen thousand some change. It will be five lakhs. Sixteen thousand six sixty. This is. Five eighty three. Yes guys, check what is it given. He, they are issuing shares in AM at 100 rupees each. If issue price per share is 100. Now 
number of shares to be issued. Five eight three three balance will be fraction shares twenty nine five one six six fraction shares sixty fraction shares settled in cash it should be point two nine point two nine into hundred. Amalgamation by nature of purchase, you have PCs, you have net assets. Guys, net assets, 8 lakh plus 1500 Y. The 1500 Y is investments, so I won't take over that. Remove. Balance is 8 lakhs. Here also same thing. Net assets taken over is only 3 lakhs. So 3 lakhs you compare with this and 8 lakhs you compare with it, you will get the PC. He is only given nature of amalgamation is purchase. So nature of amalgamation and method of accounting, purchase and purchase method. A, B, M, B maintain two columns. Purchase consideration 5 lakh 83, 5,16,660. Compare with net assets taken over. Excluding investments. 8 lakhs and 3 lakhs. Capital reserve. 2 lakhs 16,329. Here it is goodwill. 2,16,660. Net it off. I think I'll get a goodwill of some change. Actually, it should be zero, guys. In normal sense, talking about it, it should come as zero. But there are some points involved, so it's fine. Hmm? Go for the balance sheet. Small balance sheet guys, not many figures involved. Balance sheet of AM Limited as on 31st March 2012. Equity and liabilities, shareholders funds, share capital, equity share capital, add both, how many number of shares, 10,000, uh, actually it should be 10,999 shares I guess. So Reserves and surplus, we don't get any reserve, nothing is existing also guys, 
It's a new company. Non-current investments. Non-current liabilities. We have non-current liabilities of debentures. 15% debentures. We got 2,40 and 80,000. The total is? Oh yeah, there is an investment elements reserve. Yes. Reserves and surplus. I have an investment elements reserve. Forgot this. Statutory reserve. Compulsory taken over. 70,000. Non-current liabilities. Fifteen percent debentures. Fifteen percent debentures is three lakhs twenty thousand. Two lakh forty and eighty thousand we got. That is three lakhs twenty. Current liabilities. Creditors. Eighty thousand. Let's try to drop the assets. Non-current assets. First one is tangible fixed assets. Some total of that. Guys, there's a revaluation done. 3 lakhs and 10 and 7 lakhs. The total is 10 lakhs. Intangible assets. Goodwill. 331. Current assets, reduce it with the amount of cash paid. 4 lakhs plus 1 lakh, 5 lakhs. 5 lakhs minus 89. 4 lakhs 91,000. Sorry, 99,991. Amalgamation adjustment and non current assets amalgamation adjustment of seventy thousand as well.
क्यों नहीं होता I just say capitalism is wrong. Six seventy one. This is, and this will be a capitalism of eleven rupees. Capitalism of eleven. There is no goodwill at all here. Now the balance sheet will tally. Fifteen lakh sixty nine thousand nine eleven is the balance sheet total. The capitalism was calculated wrong, guys. Check. Fifteen lakh sixty-nine thousand nine eleven. 